In this video, I want to talk about demonic restrictions and why believers must be able to see them when they are operating. Now, what is a demonic restriction? A demonic restriction is any type of restriction that appears to benefit you. Listen carefully. A demonic restriction is any restriction that appears to benefit you, but in the long run, it keeps you in bondage. Now, restrictions are natural to the human condition. When the Most High made Adam, he gave him one restriction that was not to eat from the tree from knowledge of good and evil. That restriction was to keep him in reliance on him. So God wanted Adam to rely on him only. So restrictions are natural for human beings. That's how we function. Even if we would have immortal bodies, restrictions would be practical for us to operate in safety and in prosperity. And when children are born, of course, they're little babies, they can't do anything, so there needs to be restrictions for them to remain safe. If there's a hot stove, you can't just allow your child to touch the stove. Or you can't allow a child to stay up late at night, because that will hinder his or her brain development. So, we know that restrictions are practical and sometimes necessary. There are restrictions, however, that cannot be accounted for. But the way you see that they cannot be accounted for is when you walk with Christ. Some things you will only see and notice when you walk with Christ. This is how it goes. When you're not following Christ, when you're not doing God's will, you hold on to toxic restrictions. Those restrictions are toxic because in the long run, they bring forth pollution. Now, you don't see the long-term pollution that comes from those restrictions because those restrictions are conditioned to you or you've been conditioned in them by society. And this is how the human mind works. When something is repeated over and over again and embraced by the group, the mind develops familiarity with it. Now, human beings love familiar things. And there's nothing wrong with this. If you grew up in a village with many cows, you become familiar with farming. And because you are familiar with farming, you know how to farm. If you grew up in a town that depends on fishing for the, for the economy, then you are familiar with fish and you develop experience in how to fish. So familiarity in itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It's natural. Familiarity develops due to persistent and constant exposure to something. So that's how we learn, that's how we develop, and that's how we form social bonds with one another. But realize also that exposure to negative things without a redeeming context will deform you. And the way most people are deformed is that they perceive toxic restrictions as healthy. The moment you perceive toxic restrictions as healthy, you are seeing black as white and white as black. Because you're in a black and white mentality anyway. The moment you perceive toxic restrictions as healthy, you will encounter the pollution that comes from those ways of thinking, but you will never see that the pollution is a result of you operating contrary to God's will, contrary to God's design. And this is what happens in the world. You are conditioned in patterns and cycles. Or you can also say you're conditioned in demonic restrictions. They are demonic because demons benefit from those restrictions. The pollution, the mental, emotional, and also physical pollution that comes from those restrictions 
demons feed off of it. So that's why they are demonic, because demons depend on it. You are conditioned into holding on to demonic restrictions, and when the pollution comes, the same society or the same world that conditions you in a wrong way of thinking that comes with a short-term solution, or best said, with relief. And because the relief works, you now are established in the demonic patterns. So instead of you realizing, okay, this way of thinking or this way of, of relating to, to stuff is not in line with Christ, so it's diabolical, instead of realizing this, now you feel at ease in that defective way of thinking because the relief works. And when the relief works, everything is at ease. And because you experience the ease, you think that that's a solution. But you continue on living, and before you know it, this pollution comes again. And now you look for either the same method or another method to um, clear the situation. And that's how you go on and on and on, clearing situation up situation, not realizing that the pollution that develops is the result of you not functioning or obviously operating according to God's design. So it is very important for believers to see demonic restrictions for what they are. Just ask constructive questions. If there is any type of restriction, or let me say like this, if there is any type of thing you really don't want to do, or something that you just are not comfortable with doing, ask yourself, how come you're not comfortable with it? Now look, if someone would ask you to put your head uh, in a guillotine, now you don't even have to ask yourself why you're not comfortable doing it, because it's obvious. Nobody in the right mind puts their head below a guillotine. Nobody does that. Okay? Or if someone asks you why you're not comfortable putting your hand on a hot stove, you don't even have to ask yourself why you're not comfortable doing it, because it's obvious why you shouldn't do it. But when, for example, let's say you grew up in Germany, there you have two words for you, do and see. Do, you're constructed to use with people you know, people that are younger than you, and see, it's a formal way of seeing you. In English, you used to have thou and you, but now we only have you in English. Let's say you grew, you grew up in Britain. There's only one word for you. And then you go to Germany. And she learned there are two words for you. But you're more familiar with the words do instead of see. And one day you write a letter and you use do. And you conjugate your verbs in do instead of in z. Now the one, the individual that's, that grew up in Germany, that's been conditioned into this restriction that you need to watch out which way you address other people or else they may be offended, this individual has been conditioned in fear. Because whether you say do or see, you mean you. There's no natural difference. But someone that's been conditioned in that you need to address people with see, if you're not that familiar with them, they will feel upset when they read your letter or your message when you address them as do. They'll be upset with you. Now, why are they upset with you? Because they have invested in a demonic restriction so now, because they're familiar with the toxic restriction, they now want you to side with their restriction. Because when you side with their restriction, they are at ease. Then you also share in the pollution. But because you straight up refuse to get along with their toxic restriction, which is demonic, now they're upset. Because now they need to ask themselves why they are two words for you to begin with. The individual never asked why. He, just, he or she just grew up in Germany and, well, they just received what their parents taught them, where school taught them, but never asked why. And now they look at themselves and realize, wait a minute, why am I holding on to restrictions that I don't even know what it's for? Now, if an individual is smart and practical, they will use this situation as an opportunity to self-reflect and to look for help and to look for deliverance. But if someone does not want to face themselves, They'll be upset with you, and they'll call you rude, and they won't even communicate with you anymore. They'll just put your email or your letter in the trash can or in the junk box, and they'll never even look at you again. Why? It's because you don't get along with the toxicity that they are familiar with. And because you don't do that, now they're upset, 
and they are blaming you. But the thing is, you're not the one that's conditioned to watch out in which tense you address people. You're not, so you're not, you don't, you don't carry the weight, they do. But because they're familiar with the weight, they want others to validate the weight they're carrying. So now, because you don't validate their weight, they'll now perceive you as a threat. Why? Because that weight is a weight. It wears them out. But they don't realize it. Because the pollution manifests over time. But because you instantly trigger that weight, they now feel the weight. But because they experience the weight after you acted in a free way, they now don't associate that weight that they are carrying with them with you. As if you're the one that put a weight on them. And they'll project it onto you. They'll attack you to feel at ease. That is what often happens. Well, that was a demonic restriction relating to language. There are many demonic restrictions. I'm not going to talk about all of them. What I'm telling you, believer, is that you need to both self-reflect as well as reflect on those you are involved with. Are they holding onto demonic restrictions? Are they? Just ask yourself that question. If they are holding on to demonic restrictions, that means that they are dwelling in pollution. And if they dwell in pollution, that pollution will attract evil spirits. And not only evil spirits, that pollution will also attract dangerous human beings. Unless they look at themselves and realize, okay, why do I have so many restrictions? Or why do I so, am I so upset up, uh, with him or with her? Instead, if they are not willing to self-reflect, then you must lower your involvement with them. Let me say like this. If you are at the place and some of there are people that can, start, can, can stand you, after time you're around, they treat you in a very decent way. Or when you talk, they kind of very sh they give short answers. After a while, when they are at home, their brain is going to self-reflect or this is because your brain reflects on what happens. That's natural. So when you have this automatic self-reflection going on, they will, re will realize, don't minute, why am I treating this individual this harsh? And then they realize, don't a minute, it's not that individual, it's me. Now, if someone is humble, they will take this warning seriously and they will go for help. If they don't, they'll become your enemy. Why? Because they are familiar with toxicity. They are familiar with the pollution. You cannot develop long-term safe bonds with people that cling onto pollution. You can't. It will not work. Too often, believers get involved with other people without examining them. Because the way we were taught by society to examine people is to look whether they fit our box, our mental box that we have developed by how society raised us. So society raised you in a certain way and this way in which society raised you, that is your mental box. And you're told to see where someone fits into your mental box. If they fit your mental box, then you embrace them. If they don't, then you don't bother with them. They don't exist. This narcissistic black and white thinking is how many believers still operate. They don't look at the context. They don't look at the timing. Believers, it is time for us to forfeit demonic restrictions. Every restriction that's not from God will pollute you. Now, human beings, even unbelievers, can have practical restrictions that they come up with. I'm not talking about that. And what I'm saying is if, if it is a restriction 
but it can't be reconciled with Christ, that restriction is demonic. And that restriction is a tool for evil spirits and reprobate human beings to have access to you. When Christ was in the garden right before the, the soldiers came to arrest him, when the soldiers arrived and they asked, none of them said, Christ asked them who they were looking for. They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he told them, I'm he. They fell to their faces. They fell to the ground. What happened? The violence they carried with them couldn't reach Christ. It was Christ who allowed the violence to come to him so that scripture would be fulfilled. Now, when you walk by faith, you walk in the resurrection power of Christ. That means that once you cast out the spirit of violence, the spirit of fear, when you cast those two out, so that means when spirits of fear and spirits of violence don't have a hold on you anymore, anytime anyone comes towards you or anyone's around you with violent, with a violent weight, it clashes with the safety you operate in. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. So, that shows you that your spiritual alignment matters. If you're not in line with Christ, so you're not walking in the resurrection power, what happens is that when someone comes close to you with their violent weight, if you're not alert, you will be tricked into their violence. And once you're tricked into their violence, they now can use the violence on you. When you're a small child growing up, people can do almost anything to you. Because spiritually, you're not that developed yet. But the moment you are an adult, you have the ability to alter your spiritual stance. And that is why it is very important to align yourself with Christ. Any restriction you hold on to that's not from God will make you an easy prey for predators. So, for example, you just paid your rent and you know that for next month you won't work that many hours anymore because they're, low, they're lowering the hours of the people at your workplace. Now, someone who's not following Christ may conclude, well, this is the rent that you need to pay. You have to work so many hours, so logistically speaking, it's not going to work. So they begin to say things like, well, you may need to look for another apartment or else you may get homeless. They begin to imagine all kinds of bad outcomes that may happen and they begin to suggest those bad outcomes. Why? Because they are in a demonic restriction that's all about them working hard to stay alive. But you, you walk by faith. So when you hear them speak like this, you feel the weight they carry with them. So what do you do? You automatically excuse yourself from the situation. You tell them, oh, well, thank you for your concern, but I need to go now. I need to... Uh, I need to go to the library. Just make up some weird excuse to get out of the situation. Why? Right? Because the moment you, you remain in that situation, while they are decreeing and declaring demonic restrictions, you are partaking in the curse that they are holding on to. Let me repeat that. The moment people are decreeing and declaring demonic restrictions and you remain around, you are partaking in the curse that they're holding on to. You're not partaking by embracing the curse, you're partaking by allowing yourself to be exposed to it. You're not in agreement with it, you're not supporting it, but because you remain in its atmosphere, you're now affected by it, and now you're, con you're externally contaminated by it. Internally, you're not contaminated because you, because you have the Holy Spirit, but externally, you are polluted by the filth that's produced. That is why it is very important for believers to see 
beyond what people are saying and doing. Too often we, only, we, pay, too often we only pay attention to actions. I'm teaching you to pay attention to what's be beyond or behind someone's actions. Now, I don't expect you to be a psychologist. I don't expect you to be an historian. I don't expect you to be a sociologist or an anthropologist. I don't expect you to be any of that. I am just asking you, please look at what's beyond the situation. The moment you notice a demonic restriction and you're able to physically remove yourself from the situation, do it. If it's online, go offline. If you're on the phone and someone just won't stop speaking in a demonic manner, hang up the phone. I said it very loud because some of you need to hear this. Hang up. Stop allowing people to sow their seeds of discontent, frustration, and bitterness in you. Stop allowing it to happen. Look, you can't be compassionate and empathic towards others without opening yourself up to danger. You should have compassion and you should be, you should have empathy, but it shouldn't go this far that now you are embracing danger just to make someone else at ease. The moment someone holds on to demonic restrictions, lower your contact with them. If they don't show any sign of wanting any better, lower your contact. And if you notice that they kind of don't want you to, to remove yourself from their presence, if they have become addicted to seeking relief with you, then go no contact with them. There are many bad situations believers can escape by just being watchful. Now, we will go through tribulation, we will go through persecution, Christ said it, so I'm not saying that if we are smart we can bypass everything, no, we will go through stuff, but man, but just because we will go through stuff doesn't mean that, that every time persecution or um, tribulation arrives, we just need to welcome it. I'm not telling you to fight it, because that's a trap. I'm telling you to bypass it, to overrule it before it arrives. And we are able to do that, and we must do that. Well, that's it for now. Keep a cream in Christ and be at peace.